If I was to personify the American woodcock, it would be the person who marches to the beat of their own drum. The kid in high school who always tucked his t-shirts into his jeans, or the black sheep in the family. The one who is comfortable with their nonconformity because, well, it just makes sense to them. This bird is comfortable in its own feathers. In some ways, it was literally built backwards from how most other birds are. But the difference is, don't stop there. It dances, it struts, it becomes motionless when threatened. Packed within this robin-sized bird is a ton of endearing quirkiness. It's hard not to adore these birds. Like a pet with a long list of nicknames, this bird has several monikers. It answers to the Timberdoodle, the Bog Sucker, the Hokum Poke, the Labrador Twister, the Mud Snipe, and the Night Partridge. Scolopax Minor is its scientific name, and although it is technically a type of sandpiper and considered a shorebird, it is more likely to be found along the edges of woodlands and marshes than running along a beach. The American woodcock is the only of its kind in North America, hanging out in the eastern half of the United States and parts of southern Canada. It bears strong resemblance to its cousin across the pond, the Eurasian woodcock, and the Wilson snipe, which is prevalent in North and Central America. The woodcock's bill looks too long for its body, but actually, it's the perfect tool for the job. As it ambles along the forest floor, it probes its bill into soft ground in search of earthworms. Worms make up the majority of its diet, but it will also eat snails, millipedes, spiders, beetles, crickets, grasshoppers, and ants. The lower portion of the upper mandible is flexible, allowing it to open while the bill is buried in substrate. The tip is densely packed with sensory receptors. The tongue and undersides of the mandibles have a rough surface aiding the timber doodle in grasping slippery prey. Okay, but what is all that rocking about? They step heavily with the front foot, bounce several times, and then take another step and repeat. All the while, their heads stay completely still. It's as if they're moving to the beat of music that only they can hear. It isn't known exactly why they do this. One theory is that their footfalls dislodge worms, making their location known through felt perception or sound. Another is that they do the rocking motion when they know they are being observed by human or animal, letting their audience know that they are ready to burst into the sky should the threat escalate. Whatever the reason, their rhythmic walk is sure to catch a stare and a good-natured chuckle. The woodcock's eyes are large, placed high up and far back on its head, giving it rear binocular vision and an almost 360-degree visual field. This may give them a goofy look, but it actually makes perfect sense. While their bill is buried in soggy soil, they need to be able to see what's going on around them and up above. Their nares, or nostrils, are located high up on the bill, close to the skull, conveniently out of the way while they forage. Since the eyes are placed far back on the head, the ears follow in suit and are located between the eyes and the bill. This is yet another unusual ordering of parts, but there's more. Their brains are arranged differently than that of most birds. The cerebellum, which controls muscle coordination and balance, is located underneath the cerebrum and above the spinal cord. In most birds, the cerebellum occupies the rear of the skull, not below. It is thought that this is an evolutionary adaptation due to the rear of the head being taken up by the eye sockets instead of the front, as with most other birds. The cryptic coloration of timber doodles allows them to blend in seamlessly with leaf litter. But when it comes to the breeding season, they are much easier to locate. In early spring, at dawn and dusk, the males perform a stunning courtship display. The male finds a small clearing in a field, stands in one place, and makes a nasal, buzzer-like, peent call. Listen also for the faint hiccup sound he makes in between each peent.
After a bunch of painting, he takes to the air, flying in a spiral motion. As he gets higher up, the wind rushing through his wing feathers makes a twittering sound. At about 200 to 350 feet up, the twittering sound becomes more intermittent, at which point he starts to descend. He does so in a zigzag fashion, making a liquid chirping sound as he goes. He lands back on the painting ground close to where he started. If he's lucky, he will win over a female, but if she is nowhere to be found, he will begin the paint call and sky dance all over again. Males mate with multiple females and have no involvement with nest building or rearing of the young. The female builds a nest on the ground, making a shallow depression in the leaf litter. Four eggs is a pretty typical clutch size. The eggs are well camouflaged, much like the birds themselves. If a predator approaches while she is on the nest, she may feign injury, limping away from the nest to lure the intruder towards her and away from her eggs. She incubates the eggs for 20 to 22 days. The chicks are precocial and hatch covered in tan and dark brown mottled fluff. She will brood them just long enough for them to dry off from hatching, but after a couple of hours, the whole group is up and ready to move out. She feeds them for the first week, although around their third or fourth day, they are already probing the soil. It's helpful that their feather color and pattern mimic wet logs and leaf litter. If a predator approaches the mother and chicks, they freeze in place, relying upon their cryptic coloration to remain unseen. The chicks become independent at around one month of age. Woodcocks are mostly solitary birds, although occasionally they can be found in groups of three or four. Timberdoodles in more northern latitudes migrate south for the winter, while those in milder climates are year-round residents. For those migrating, they fly at night, either alone or in small flocks, utilizing the eastern and central flyways. Sometimes they can be found in city parks probing the soil underneath shrubs as they refuel and rest from their journey. I really developed a fondness and appreciation for this bird. I hope that you enjoyed learning about its quirkiness and uniqueness as well. Do you have the woodcock where you live? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.